This is a recording in which we're going to discuss an approach to analyzing basically all types of mixture designs, but uh, we'll deal with a relatively simple case first. And we're going to talk about something called forward selection. We're going to come back to this topic later in the course as we get into some in-depth discussions on screening designs. But basically, when you analyze a mixture, there is a problem. And that is, because of that sum to one constraint, the coefficients in the model can be highly correlated. So there's usually moderate correlation. And you'll see later in an example, uh, highly correlated. As a result, classic approaches to analysis, for instance, doing hypothesis testing, and looking at p-values to remove non-significant terms simply do not hold. And I recommend strongly against that approach. Um, those approaches of p-values and hypothesis test, to the extent they work at all, requires that you have an orthogonal design and that all estimates in your model be uncorrelated. Okay. Well, again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail at this point. I'm going to backfill some detail in a later section in the course. But when we evaluate models, different models, and we try to rate them, and often we try to rate them in terms of how well they might predict the behavior of the system in study, a couple of popular statistics are called the AIC, Akaiki Information Criterion, and another one is called the BIC, the Bayes Information Criterion. I will skip any discussion of the mathematical details. Again, we'll backfill details later in the course. But I can tell you, for every model that you fit, an AIC and a BIC value is calculated and generally smaller values are preferred. So we're looking for models <coughs> with a smaller values of AIC or BIC. So basically, if I look through a series of models, I'm looking for the ones where the AIC and the BIC are smallest uh, compared to competing models. And generally, there is some computational differences. Again, I'm not going to go into details now um, in how these two statistics are computed. So frequently, they do not necessarily agree on a best model. And what we're going to do is use a method, a simple method, to try to look at some models and decide which of the models might be best. And we're going to do this in what's called the stepwise platform and jump. Again, later on in the course, we're going to make heavy use of this platform for analysis. Okay, So basically, we're going to use something called forward selection. And at this point, I'm simply going to go over to the JUMP software and work through the analysis. And I'm going to use another example. This example is discussed uh, in the Mixture Designs Part 1 notes. This is an experiment to design a detergent. It has three components, water, alcohol, and urea. And they have used an augmented simplex centroid design, which is not our primary focus. There are two responses, the viscosity of the solution and turbidity. Basically, turbidity is a measure of cloudiness. So I'm going to just look at viscosity and analyze one of the um, responses. Read the mixture design part one notes in some detail if you are interested in the particulars of the experiment. So I go to Analyze, Fit Model. So I'm going to use viscosity as my response. I'll highlight my three ingredients or mixture factors. And then under Macros, I'll pick Mixture Response Surface, highlight the three ingredients, and cross them to put in the three-way nonlinear blending term. This is what we've already done. But up where you see Fitting Personality, 
click on standard least squares and switch to stepwise. Okay. So at this point, uh, when I click run, it actually takes me to a new platform. Okay. And essentially, what we're going to do is something called forward selection and jump and by default says direction is forward. Here's what forward selection does. You start with no terms in the model and then you add terms in sequence that maximizes some fitting criterion. We're going to start by adding terms in sequence that gives us the smallest BIC. Remember, smaller is better and jump gives you the initial values. Notice, since this is a mixture, jump has locked in the three pure component terms. You cannot remove them or you wouldn't have a mixture. So at this point, if I click step, what jump did, by the way, it found that the three-way nonlinear blending term was highly significant and then it automatically, using the uh, heredity principle, filled in all the two ways. So minimum AIC leads us to this model. Okay, so at this point, you can now fit this model. Just click on Run Model. Jump opens up something called a fit group. Again, we're going to use this a lot uh, in the future. And a fit group is basically a fit model report, but it groups together reports for a number of different models. Okay. So I'm going to set that aside for now. And I'm going to go and remove all the terms again. This time, I'm going to switch to minimum AIC. Okay. So I'm going to take a step. It did the same thing. It went right for that three-way nonlinear blending term, okay, and then backfilled with all of the other terms. Okay. Now, suppose I removed, by the way, notice the AIC and the BIC values. If I were to remove the three-way, notice what happens. They actually get smaller. The problem is, the reason they're larger is because the term we really want is the three-way nonlinear blending term. Jump by default assumes heredity and fills in the lower order terms. But what if we removed one, like water by urea? Well, it won't let me do it. Notice if I remove any of these, it insists on removing the three-way. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and remove it for comparison. Click Run Model. Okay, at this point, I have a fit group with two models, but you can have many more in it. Okay. So I'm going to close stepwise. So these are two potential models that we could fit. Okay. And if I scroll down, I'm going to actually pick the first model. The first model actually um, with the three-way terms seem to be most important. But I can fit a whole series of these and compare them, all properties of them. We won't get into it just yet. We will later in the course. Because uh, stepwise and some other methods that I cover are really important to modern design analysis. And I'm going to call up the profiler. And in the profiler, as we've done before, we can access desirability. I'm going to assume they would like the detergent to have minimum viscosity. Again, I have no idea. The case study doesn't really tell me. So then I would maximize desirability. So basically, it's giving me nonsense. I think I know why. I'm going to show you in a minute. So I'm going to go back and take a look at alcohol, water, and urea. Notice what happened. 
when this design was created, okay, we failed to put in number one the mixture property. Okay. This is unconstrained, so I can leave it at 0 to 1. And I forgot to put in the design rule, which is mixture. Click OK. okay. So now I'll go back to my analysis. Okay. And I'm going to go back and do a recalc. And now we'll, I may have to re redo the whole analysis. I don't actually want to. We'll see what happens. Yep. So what I'm going to have to do, unfortunately, is I should have done that in advance. I did not. Fit model, recall, go to stepwise, click go, and run the model. So once again, I call up the profiler, and I want to use desirability functions, and I want to minimize viscosity. Okay. And I maximize desirability. Now it recognizes the constraint. So it, it's recommending basically 80% water, 20% urea, and no alcohol. Okay. So this is really an approach, and it is discussed in the notes, so you can step through the details. Okay. But this is an approach to analyzing a mixture design and the traditional hypothesis testing approach, which is shaky to begin with, simply does not work because the coefficients are also correlated.